Hi everyone! Is this working? Uh, sorry, I'm looking and seeing if I can... Aha! It looks like it's working! Hi everyone! I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I'm here live to introduce a new spin-along that I want to do. A lot of you have asked for me to do some live spinning and I would love to do that. Um, but since I know that there would be a lot of introduction, I figured I'd get that out of the way now. And then when the kids are napping, then I can actually get some spinning done when the lighting is a bit better than now. So, <laughs> um, I, I guess, all right, so first I am going to share with you guys my equipment. I started off spinning on this drop spindle and I thought that if I liked drops spinning that I could then like get a wheel and you know, I'd really need to prove that I, to myself that I enjoyed it. Well, it turns out spinning on a wheel is a lot easier than spinning on a drop spindle. So I now like to recommend to beginners that if you have access to a wheel, then you should really um, try and get one. Um, and Well, not buy one, but see if you can borrow one and test one out to see if you like it because it is so much easier than starting with one of these. All right, and so my wheel, this, eek, okay. And live, yeah, one of my first live things. I'm gonna pick up the wheel since, all right. This is Sandry. Um, she is a Kromsky Fantasia wheel. And as you can see, she is very light and very small. So it's really easy for me to put her in a closet or hide her from the kids so that way my spinning doesn't get unraveled. And yeah, I have been extremely happy with this wheel. Um, and especially since, so it came with two larger whirls. I think the ratios are like, I can't remember if they're like one to five and then, um, or what. So what these, huh. so, so what the whirls are is they set the ratio of However many times you spin the wheel, how quickly the, like, this part <laughs> spins. Wow, I'm doing a great introduction to a wheel, guys. Um, and so the smaller, the, the, the smaller the radius is on the whirl, the faster, there we go, the faster the spinning you will get. And so when you want to use a thinner yarn, you want to use as small a whirl as possible. And so one of the best, hi Lynn, um, she wanted to know how I decided on this wheel. Basically, I looked at a lot of reviews of other spinners and like the first wheels that people took, picked. But then I went to a yarn fair in Illinois. It was, I think, Stitches Midwest and they had a lot of booths with a lot of wheels and they just let me sit down and try. And, you know, he handed me some fiber. I sat at the wheel and before I knew it, I was just off and spinning. And it was that easy and felt that natural that I could, I felt like I could have sat there for, you know, an hour easily and I was at a public fair. And so that's how I decided I wanted this. And it doesn't look, like in your head, you have the vision of like a classic spinning wheel. And so this is definitely kind of a more modern look. Um, hi, Rhonda. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I just like that it doesn't take up a lot of space in the house. Um, and that is easy. And another thing is I can put at the bottom, I don't have the other metal piece in right now, but you can put for when you ply, you can attach it directly to the wheel. Hi! <laughs> um, and so that is really, really handy. But yeah, I'm. that's basically how I picked it. Wow, you guys are from all over. We've got Ontario, Nebraska, 
Um, so the wheel is a Kromsky Fantasia. And I've been very happy. It's easy to find parts if something like gets broken. I snapped one of the, ow. <laughs> okay, I pinched my finger. This is the problem with picking up the wheel and trying to spin it uh, live for you guys. Um, so I broke, I snapped a drive band once. So now I have a spare. And, you know, I don't have a, a bobbin on right now, so I'm not quite set up to go. But, and I have a, wow, Canada's representing. Um, and, yeah, I have, it's easy, been kind of easy to find accessories. Not necessarily locally, but online. And so that has been useful and helpful. But see how light and small and you can even get carry bags from them. Wow, Brazil. Woohoo. Um, yeah, and you can get carry bags. And so people will like use this as like a travel wheel. Did I take lessons? No. Um, I watched a couple videos on like how to get started. And then I really just kind of went for it. So I start, I, I said at the beginning, I started on this drop spindle and it took me a while to actually get the hang of spinning. I tried once and then stopped for a while because it did not go well. And then I picked it up again with um, watching some videos and I spun yard, like hundreds, probably thousands of yards on this, you know, and you kind of wind the yarn around the shaft as you go. And I was looking at getting another drop spindle when I realized, you know, I really wanted a wheel. And for my 30th birthday, um, they, they, my in-laws surprised me with the wheel. Yeah, the Turkish drop spindles have like, uh, like a piece that's removable. And so then you can like wind a center pole ball as you're spinning. I'm actually not sure if I have one or not. I thought about getting one at one point, but maybe then instead of getting that, I got the wheel. And so I haven't really used this much since because um, the, the weight of the spindle just adds so much more tension that it was a bit harder. Um, but if I, yeah, I think if you were gonna buy a drop spindle, knowing what I know now, I would get a Turkish drop spindle because it's easier one of the hardest parts for me with this, since I was winding the yarn that I was spinning around the center portion, it made it, it was really hard to wind into a ball after the fact. Yeah, It is really worth having it. I haven't tried the Kromsky Minstrel before. Um, I'm really, I still consider myself, you know, like a beginner spinner because my singles are not you know, perfect and even, and my yarn does not look like, you know, you, when you watch some of these people who are expert, like guild level spinners, the, um, the consistency that they can achieve is amazing. But yeah, I'm really happy with this. <laughs> well, you know, you can't always buy a drop spindle. They're like a 15, $20 investment. And, you know, it's a couple hundred for the wheel. So it's not, but it's, the technique is different. Um, and so starting with the drop spindle, it made it really easy to transition to the wheel because it was a little harder to manage. Um, and because since you have to really keep it spinning with your hand and as it drops and you have to stop and wind the yarn. And um, I mean, I like it because I mean, if you notice that I named the wheel Sandry, there's like a whole like spinning character and talking about spinning their first yarn on a drop spindle. And so I have my first yarn. I saved it. It's precious um, <laughs> uh, that, that I ever made with this. But I've come a long way since then. So I was talking about the, the whirls, the ones that come on on the Fantasia are the larger ones that are good for spinning, you know, thicker singles. Like I think I can get like a DK and you can get, if you pedal really fast, you can get a much thinner single, but I like being able to treadle slower. And so I was able to get some even smaller 
um, whorls. And so I think that for the spin along, I want to do a thinner yarn. It takes a lot longer, but it's a lot of fun. Ooh, I, okay, I'm not real. My favorite yarn, my favorite fiber to spin, I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce, um, but it's BFL Blue Faced Lanchester. <laughs> so, in, because you know, we have out here in Massachusetts, there's Worcester that's Lester, Blue Faced Lester. Um, BFL is, the, the fibers are long, they're really soft. I really enjoyed spinning it. I've spun a lot of, a lot of different things right now. Um, when I started, a really nice expert spinner gave me just a trash bag full of other fibers that her first spinning teacher gave her and that she wasn't gonna spin so I could start playing with different fibers. And so I've spun some unknown dog fur and um, yeah, al alpaca, and I've got some, even some nylon fiber that I want to just try dyeing with the straight nylon, and, um, but I do want to give a shout out to the, um, the, the, the roving subscription service Into the World. Um, I subscribed to that for a while, and I really liked it, because, like, the monthly roving is, comes in gorgeous colors, but it's also a different fiber every month, and so, you know, you would have merino or superwash merino and all these different things. So you could really see a little bit of the difference or sometimes there would be a silk blend. Um, and yeah, so that was a lot of fun to really test myself and figure out what I liked because I didn't want to join a subscription service that had or a club, a fiber club that had used the same base all the time because I didn't know what base I loved at the time. But when you have a silk blend, it gets a little easier to spin because the fiber, silk, the silk fibers are really long. So it kind of like, and it's sticky. So, or, you know, sticky, it like sticks to itself. So it holds together really well. So it's really nice to spin with for the first time. Um, silk hankies are a lot of fun to spin with too. Um, Cause yeah, then they're fun to dye. But before this project, so some of my favorite dyeing to do is to break Wilton's Violet. And I have a Wilton's Violet spinning video. Oh, where's my... Oh, thank you so much. I'm really glad you like my dyeing videos. Um, oh, the, the name of the wheel is the Kromsky Fantasia. Um, I will put a link to it in the description um, at the end, like after this video has like uploaded. So I have another video on this channel of me spinning is doing the broken violet and yeah, okay, am I on the camera? And I spun, it's not, you can't really see the pink as well on this right now, but so I spun this yarn. Um, which was a lot of fun and it was I think that I did a crochet chain of the roving and kind of just broke the violet over it and Spinning with broken violet is one of the best things ever because the colors really just Meld okay. I guess I can't change the because they meld together and so you can't even really appreciate from my phone the depth of almost like jewel tone um, from the colors in here so I wanted to play with some of the other roving that I dyed and I've uploaded to this channel. So one of them is, this was, I believe, Knit Picks, Wool, Knit Picks Full Circle and Pigeon. So it was a gray base. And I think that it's a mixture of Merino and their Peruvian Highland wool. And so I had this in a crochet chain and I actually dip dyed it into the Wilton's Violet food coloring. So you have a bit of a gradient um, from the pink to the blue, but because it was in the crochet chain, you get kind of a more mixture of the color as you go through. So there's a section with the gray and the blue kind of in the center, and then the ends have a lot more pink. So, do-do-do. So yeah, so you can see. So this, 
I think I want to do as um, longer repeats of color. You could separate this and do like a full on blue to pink gradient and start with like the bluer section and then go to pink or go in the middle. Um, but the, I, I guess for this, I want to do something a little different. So I think I will probably be going down the length of this roving when I spin it. And so we'll just, there'll be transitions of the color, but the repeats will be longer. So you would get a yarn with really thick stripes. But this is gonna be one of the two plies of yarn. I wanna use a different broken violet roving for the other strand. And hopefully I'll be able to spin them at about similar weights. So the other one, this is my speckled roving that I did on Knit Picks Bear Peruvian Highland roving. So it's a little different. It's 100% Peruvian Highland wool. And this one I speckled it with, and I forget what I used for the technique, but I speckled it with Wilton's Violet. And you can see there's almost no purple. It almost completely separated into the blue and the pink. Um, and and there's still like a reasonable amount of white. So I think that, you know, combining these two fibers into a yarn could end up being like really cool and end up with like a really nice twist and really take advantage of the hand dyed and hand spun. And so, and make it slightly different or way more visually different from this yarn. and. I hear one of my kids, um, but don't worry, he is fine. Um, my partner will go check on him um, in, a, in a second. Um, thanks, honey. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought that it would be fun and it's it'll be new for me because I haven't, um, it'll give me a lot more yardage so each of the these rovings started off as 100 grams. And 100 grams of yarn, when you end up with like a worsted or DK weight yarn, or even heavy worsted, is enough to make a hat or maybe a cowl and a lot of different projects. But I found that the yarn that I spin is thicker and therefore a little shorter, or like maybe denser than commercial yarns. So I don't get as much yardage per weight. Um, and so, Oh, I'm going to share the project. I'm going to be coming live as I'm spinning it. So this is just part one of a series of, of videos. And then at the end, maybe I'll like edit some highlights into like a compilation or just leave it as kind of like a series. But yes, I will definitely be sharing like, well, probably not every single second of spinning, but I will be sharing like the, the big steps and as I go. But People have been asking about how you decide, and so I wanted to do something that would be very unique, very like clearly handmade, and hopefully by using 200 grams of yarn, I will get plenty of fiber that maybe I'll, well, I do have a broken violet hat already <laughs> that I made myself, but yeah, so I'm not sure quite what I'll make with it yet, but Sometimes I kind of let, as I start spinning the yarn, just like I plan a bit, but I see how I, sometimes I see how I feel when I start spinning and then decide like how thin or thick I want to make the singles. Um, but yeah, that is my plan for the series and a little bit about um, the tools that I have at my disposal and um, I'm excited. I was gonna try to see if I could rig up my nice camera and use that as a webcam, but I haven't really figured out how to do that yet. And so it would be really nice to have a zoom function as um, I'm doing this, but I'm gonna play more with my phone on the tripod so that way hopefully I can like switch angles a bit easier and I'll certainly be able to angle it so we can seal the wheel on the floor, so I don't have to pick it up. <laughs> but 
anyway, I look forward to this project and I hope tomorrow around lunchtime, like sometime maybe around noon Eastern Standard Time, I will pop on and start some of the spinning. Um, but, you know, this is a toddler pending. And so I'm excited to really get back into some spinning now that, you know, I have um, some more time to myself. And actually, <laughs> this weekend, um, my husband's taking the kids um, away so that way I can have the house to myself to do projects and fun projects, not like house projects um, for the weekend. So I'm really excited about my crafting staycation and I will probably pop on a bit because I have time of quiet <laughs> at my disposal. So, uh, but don't worry, if you can't catch me live, the videos will be on the channel after the fact. So if you aren't able to come in while I'm, you know, I, it's hard to like for me to have like a planned time, but my eldest is at school, so he's not gonna be um, running out of his room during nap time constantly <laughs> if I'm trying to film. Um, but the videos will be on the channel. And so if you miss me live, you will be able to watch it later on um, at your convenience. But I hope that, yeah, some of you might be around and I, oh, I'm really excited to spin again. Uh, yeah, it's kind of, you know, some of these might have more action, but some of it is almost like, I guess there's slow TV where you can watch like yarn go from sheep all the way to a sweater. Um, and there's some channels where you do that. And so hopefully like some of this will just kind of like be relaxing, hang out. You can ask questions or I'll try to find things to talk about um, as I'm spinning and we'll see how well I can spin and talk at the same time. And you can see like the mistakes and the cool parts too. So I hope that this series will be fun. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I hope to catch you guys soon. Good night, everyone. <laughs>